So I've got four wicking tubs here. I'm gonna do an experiment with the Haas Red Snapper Tomato and the Haasinator Tomato. We're gonna to plant two tomatoes in each of these wicking tubs. I'm not gonna put a tomato cage on it right now because it's obviously not necessary yet, but hopefully it will be. Two in each tub. I'm gonna fertilize them exactly the same, uh, lime the containers exactly the same. Uh, Red Snapper is one of my favorites, so it's gonna be hard to beat. But we're gonna give it a shot this year. Hossinator versus Red Snapper, part one. So first of all, I came through here with this little tool. It's kind of a weird shaped little tool. Got a real sharp edge, or, it, or you can put a real sharp edge on it. And uh, man, it's just real good for just doing the small little weeds and just cutting just below the surface. Does real good cleaning out these tubs. So I used this on all the tubs, all four of the tubs, and got it uh, free of vegetation. Uh, cut all the vegetation that was growing on it. One of them was pretty heavy in vegetation, the other three were not. But um, cut that off with this little tool here. You may want uh, to take a look at it. I'll put a link to it uh, below the video. I've had it for several years and I really, really like it. So the first thing we're gonna do is add lime. Um, this is the, will be the third or fourth year, third year I think, to plant in this tub. Same potting mix, same everything. I'm not gonna change out potting mix. I've had that question asked of me before and I just don't understand why anybody would have to do that. I'm gonna put about a pound of lime in it, which I did, I know I did the first year I planted. I probably put some in it last year. I don't know if I put a pound or not, but uh, then get in here and turn it over about the first four or five inches, just be easier to do it by hand. First four or five inches of soil, turn that lime in. This is a garden lime. And you're just trying to sweeten up the soil, trying to get that pH up. And no, I haven't done a soil test on these uh, tubs. It's basically potting mix. I know the pH of the potting mix is around probably five and a half or six and since I put some lime in it the first year, I probably raised it up to seven, but you know, with, with rain coming in on it, may have washed some of that out and, and reverted back to a lower pH. I'm really not sure. Probably should have tested, but I didn't. So we got that one done. Let's get these other three ready to plant. And then I'm gonna come in here on the side like I do on all my tubs. If I'm planting blackberries or tomatoes or whatever I put in tubs, I cut a channel around the outside, around this ring, just ring the outside with a pound of fertilizer. Now these are tomatoes, so they need that phosphorus, that middle number uh, to give them plenty of uh, uh, phosphorus for blooms and blooms make your tomatoes. So I'm gonna put a pound of 10-20-10 in there. And I know some of you say you can't find 10-20-10 and that certainly may be the case. What I'm gonna do next week is show you how to make 10-20-10. Uh, so uh, hopefully I'll get that video up next week. You can take a look at that. But right now I'm gonna put a pound of store-bought 10-20-10 in here. I weighed it up and it's about, um, a pound is about one and a quarter cups, a pound of this fertilizer. Now yours may be a little different, I don't know, but a pound of this 10-20-10 is about one and a quarter cups. Put it in there, cover it up. So here are my red snappers. I'm taking them straight out of that hoss tray. You can see they're pretty small plug, but they do great just right out of the tray. I get my little hoary hoary knife. My tomato cage comes almost all the way to the outside rim. So I'm gonna plant them inside the 
um, inside the tub maybe five inches, something like that. So I'll have plenty of room to set the tomato cage on top when they get um, a little bit bigger. So we'll set it, we'll set tomato about five to six inches from the outside. We'll put just a dab of Epsom salt in the hole. That might be a teaspoon maybe. Normally I do more than that, but I don't have that much. I need to go buy some more. So I'll put that down the hole. And then these, uh, these tomatoes are gonna go deep. They're pretty tall. They're almost a foot tall. So we're gonna get them down in there. Pretty doggone deep. And then close the dirt up around them. Right, I can go deeper than that. Let's go deeper than that. Let's go deeper than that. There you go. Put most of the plant underneath the soil. And just have them about the you know, top, maybe three or four inches sticking up, four or five inches. Pack it down around the around it good so the roots will seal. The soil will seal up around the roots real good. And there's two of the red snapper. Again, these are red snappers, so it's still part of the experiment. Not really changing that much. I'll dig that hole. A little bit of Epsom salt. Supposedly that's, that helps with um, blossom end rot. I've read plenty of articles says it has absolutely nothing to do with it, but I've used it in the past and there have been times when um, I found that it seemed to help. So I'm going to go ahead and separate these two. Put it down deep, cover it up deep. Now, since I separated you, I'm just going to put you in. Right about there, nice and deep. Take off some of those bottom leaves. Get it down in there. So you can stand it up straight. My daddy used to say, y'all boys better straighten up. <laughs> we did. He was big. <laughs> and we believed him when he said he was gonna whoop us. Had plenty of experience with that. All right, so those are planted. Red snapper's done, hostinator's next. So here are the hostinators. Now I did pot those up just a few days ago, but they haven't had time to, to gain any really roots. I don't see any roots through that clear uh, cup. So, bunch of nice hole. These won't go quite as deep because they're not gonna be, they're not as tall, not as big as those red snappers are. But I'll do two holes. Hole may have to be a little bit bigger around, depending on that root ball. A little bit of Epsom salt. We'll dump it out, but it's not going to be much more than just that. Well, it's holding together pretty good. It's just, it's basically that plug that was on the red slapper, plus maybe a day or two of root growth, but not much. So I'm gonna put that dude down in there. I'm gonna go deep. Just a little bit sticking up. Same on this one. Down in there, deep. Looks good, good, good. These are determinate tomato, if I remember right. So the cage won't have to be very large. It can, I could have a little short cage. A little e-salt. And you can redo the Epsom salt later if necessary. I can, in other words, I can come back and put a little bit more in it later. 
down in there. I'm being gentle with them because what little growth, what little root growth they have experienced since I put them in the pots, I don't want to disturb. I don't. It's not. It's not much for what I can see. Not much at all. Get it down in there. Squash it in good. Keep my cups. Need those next year. They say hoss on it, so. If I like the hallucinator, I'll just reuse them next year. All right, I'm gonna come in here and water them gently. I really like this watering wand from Haas to Dram. Real gentle. Uh, I use it for watering the blackberries from the top if, I, if I'm fertilizing. You want that dirt that you packed around there to really seal around those roots so there's no air gaps and air gaps could mean the roots dry out. You don't want that. I don't have my drip system hooked up quite yet this year as far as the timer and the uh, pressure regulator and all that stuff. So I'll water down the top, down the hole until I see it coming out the weep hole. So uh, that's it, we've got them done. Uh, I've still got a bunch more to plant. I've got a bunch of seedlings there that I've got out here in uh, about an inch of water and they're doing well. My neighbor came over yesterday and gave me a few of the plants he has, big beef and um, sun gold. I really like the sun gold. I didn't get any of those this year. So here's our experiment, red snapper and hossinator tomatoes. Now you're gonna have to stay with me all spring and summer to see which one does the best. So you'll know next year or for your fall garden what to plant? Red snapper or hallucinator? The game is on. And we're gone.